Alrighty, so I am redoing this series because there is a lot going on in the world today that is extremely different um, and is changing how the future of certain companies and businesses are going to play out. Um, everything said in this video is an opinion and a forecast or an analysis based off of what's going on and what I am seeing. None of it is factual. None of it is... Um, for sure going to happen. And I just want to make that clear. Now, I'm not saying that this business is going to go to business or this business is going to do better than this business. Things can change at the flip of a finger or flick of a finger, whatever the saying is. I do want to take some time, though, at the beginning of this video to say a huge thank you to anyone that is still working um, today out there, feeding people, giving people food, taking care of people, um, especially the medical professionals out there and anyone that is helping anyone um, in your neighborhood. A huge thank you to just anyone who is still putting themselves in at, I guess, in danger or at risk uh, to help other people have access to food, groceries, um, and medical attention. So a huge thank you. Honestly, I really do mean that. Um, that aside, let's get right into the video. Um, a lot has changed. So as you saw, we went through about a week and a half to two weeks of the stock market completely crashing. And the stocks are starting to do better. And there's a reason to that. The U.S. is definitely uh, taking some action to help um, implement strategies to help investors feel more comfortable in investing in companies. And the stock prices just got so low that a lot of other people, including myself, felt a little more comfortable um, in buying stocks that are like $10, $12, $15. Um, and uh, knowing that they're eventually going to grow in about a year, a year and a half or two years from now. So... A uh, couple of factors, and there's definitely more factors on top of that as to why the stock market's growing and why you should invest now is the time. Definitely, if you have extra money that you have laying around or savings, throw a couple of it, uh, throw a bit of it into the stock market, into a company that you have a lot of trust in, and uh, maybe even talk to a financial advisor or an investor and get some opinions around uh, just even your friends or family. Um, but that aside, things are going to change. Stock prices are going to go up. They're not going to go up. They're not going to continue to climb back to what they were um, before the stock market crashed due to um, that who shall not be named. Um, but yeah, things in terms of the stock market, I feel very comfortable with Cedar Fair um, and their growth. I think we're going to stay around this ball field for quite some time. I don't think it's going to go up any further. I don't think we're going to get back into the 40s anytime soon. But if we do, hey, I'll be surprised and shocked. Um, the sooner the better for me. But nonetheless, what is the future of Cedar Fair? So with what's going on, um, I I don't want to go, I don't want to say too much of what I think is going to happen in terms of when they're going to open. I don't want to scare anyone and I don't want to upset anyone anymore. I will say when it comes to Cedar Fair, I do have very definitive answers on when they're going to open up. And my sources that I have for Cedar Fair are very reliable and for Six Flags as well. That being said, I do not have a date yet. So it is still obviously mid-May based off of what Cedar Fair themselves have announced. And that is what you are going to listen to. And that is what we're going to assume. So mid-May is the target opening date that we have for Cedar Fair. And if we take what the president of the United States has recently said, we are going to assume that mid-May is a very reasonable assumption as to when the target, keyword target, of opening up the economy and businesses again. So obviously, America has very different strategies to other countries out there. They're aiming for about 15 days of quarantine, and then everything will open up after that. Um, that is very different to what we are doing over here in Canada. I'm not going to say which one's better in this video. I'm going to keep my political views out of these videos. Um, but nonetheless, um, over here in Canada, we are going to be locked down for, it looks like, two months. I don't think it's going to be a full lockdown, but... Um, Currently, we know that self-distancing and all that they're saying is going to last up to a minimum of two months currently, um, which has me believing that Canada's Wonderland will face some impacts there. But um, what's going to happen with Cedar Fair? So I think that we're going to see a lot of smaller parks start to struggle. I think we may even see a bigger corporation start to struggle and assets may need to be sold off. Cedar Fair is in a very strong financial position. So I'm not going to touch on what the other chain is doing that's making me believe Cedar Fair is in a much better state. I'm going to touch on Cedar Fair. So Cedar Fair has had a 40% increase in season pass sales before um, the season even started, before Q1 of this year started. That's crazy. Okay, sorry, that is Q1. 40% increase in season pass sales, double digits across the entire chain. 
So they have money. They have money already of people who committed to coming to Cedar Fair, a Cedar Fair park in the 2020 season. And we know that Six Flags had a decline in sales in terms of season passes and memberships. So Cedar Fair was already at an advantage going into the 2020 season. Um, And we know that moving forward, they have money that they have set aside to purchase parks down the road. That is emergency money or money that you could say to purchase parks. And I think that opportunity is going to come a lot sooner if this self-quarantine and this self-isolation continues to go into July and August. If we lose the 2020 season, you're going to see those small independent chains um, struggle a little more than I was originally anticipating. And I think we may even see one of the bigger chains struggling uh, to survive. And there are definitely signs of that uh, arising right now. And I'm going to touch on that in tomorrow's video. So there's something about Six Flags that I want to discuss um, in tomorrow's video. I'm not going to touch on it in this video. But it is leading me to believe that Cedar Fair may end up acquiring some parks during the next year or two through this financial crisis that we're going through due to the what shall not be named. <laughs> but I definitely see Cedar Fair's portfolio growing in the next two years because of this. I, I honestly do. Now, the key point, uh, the huge takeaway here is I honestly think there's a top four park in the chain. So Kings Island, Carowinds, Cedar Point, and Canada's Wonderland are going to benefit from this. And there is a very specific um, situation that has occurred before, especially at Canada's Wonderland. It wasn't under Cedar Fair, but it, it's a very common situation. When a big park loses attendance due to something that is going on out of its control, they will push forward large investments to bring in the attendance the next year. Canada's Wonderland during the SARS um, pandemic built, um, they opened up an Italian job stunt coaster. And SARS had happened that same year. There was a very low attendance that year. So the next year, they pushed forward Tomb Raider, um, their really crappy flying coaster, to open the very next year to help boost attendance as well. So there's a very specific example of a park or a company moving forward uh, investments to help boost attendance. And you're going to see that at the four main parks. So Canada's Wonderland, Cedar Point, Kings Island, and Carowinds are going to struggle this year in terms of attendance. Every park around North America is going to struggle this year in terms of attendance. It's very, actually, just every park in the world is going to struggle in terms of attendance this year. I'd be very shocked if these big parks break a million attendance um, this year, because even when they do open, people are not going to feel fully comfortable and confident to go to these parks. And they're going to need big additions to draw in people um, as soon as possible. I'm not saying Canada's One is going to build a coaster in 2021. Trust me. No, Cedar Point's got that coaster on lockdown. You're going to see things push forward. So a flat ride that was maybe next year where we're supposed to get a, a restaurant at Canada's Wonderland in 2021. Maybe they'll push forward one of those really awesome flat rides that are supposed to come out three to four years from now. It'll come out in 2021 and then a coaster in 2022. That is kind of the things that you're going to want to look forward to. Carowinds might push forward uh, their additions as well. Kings Island and Cedar Point as well. They're going to need to draw in people to boost those numbers, get those fast lane sales in in 2021 and 2022 um, to help put themselves back to where they were before this crisis. That is just fact and that is just um, common sense. And uh, for anyone that knows business, this is just the case. It's going to happen at a lot of those parks. You're going to see a lot of these uh, investments being pushed forward. And uh, it's... I, I guess it's the silver lining through what's been going on in the world right now. And I don't want to say the silver lining because it's a really, really awful situation. But I know a lot of you guys are really upset about your parks not opening. And, uh, you know, a lot of you have reached out for help or advice. And, you know, you've been upset with the, the news that's come forward from this channel, even though you yourself understand it's true. And uh, I wanted to start talking about, you know, some of the positives now. I've, I've done enough time talking about the negatives in terms of this. And uh, there, there are positives that are going to come. You're not going to see Cedar Fair go bankrupt, even if they don't open this year at all. They are fine. Um, and uh, there's definitely some positives to come. So and, and go out, go outside and take a walk, get some fresh air, listen to some music, do things that you love outside of theme parks and roller coasters. There's got to be something. Everyone likes music. Go for a walk. And listen to music. I promise you it'll help you. It helps calm me down. And I know it will help you. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video on Cedar Fair. 
Ant's future, I tried to throw in as much and little information as possible um, because I'm going to start going into individual parks future as well moving forward because I have some pretty um, interesting ideas of what these top four parks are going to do um, in the chain. And then again, tomorrow will be Six Flags. And that's going to be a much more interesting video than this one because this one was really easy to make and understand. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this video for others to enjoy. Stay safe, guys, and stay clean. Have a good one. Bye.